Hello, Bismillah, and welcome back to yet another episode of Peace Only Podcast, where we take you inside the lives of our volunteers. I'm Franco Latona. This week, we're featuring community economic volunteer Evelyn, who created a series of coloring books for kids that feature stories with themes of gender equity and inclusion. Evelyn is approaching the one-year mark in her service. She says so far, things are pretty good. It's, it's about what I thought it would be, that there are equally challenging and trying times here as there are moments of beauty that I came here for. Um, the people here are really lovely and kind and generous, and there's a um, an openness and friendliness with strangers here that you don't find too often in the U.S. Evelyn was placed in a site in the far northeast corner of Senegal. There's about 10,000 people. Um, it's primarily a Pular community, but we also are close to the Malian border, so we have a little Sodinke, um community as well. And so you speak Pular? I speak Pular du Nord. I also speak French. Um, there's actually a good number of people who speak French in my village, so I get to practice that quite a bit too. Now, for Evelyn, working with kids is nothing new. She says she had a lot of experience volunteering with children before coming to Peace Corps. My first volunteer experience was working at a children's refuge in Tapachula, Mexico, which is really far south, kind of bordering Guatemala. But um, prior to coming here, I was also a big sister to a little sister through Big Brothers Big Sisters. Um, I, I, kids are just awesome. I love them. Evelyn says she first got the idea to make a coloring book series almost immediately after arriving in Senegal. During pre-service training, Evelyn, like all volunteers, took a trip to visit the village she would be serving for two years along with the volunteers she was going to replace, or Ancien, as they are known here at Peace Corps Senegal. At one point during the trip, Evelyn noticed her Ancien taking pictures of a coloring book that were produced by Tostan, a local NGO in Senegal. The coloring book depicted characters that resembled Senegalese people. Evelyn says her ancienne was trying to preserve the book and get more copies printed because of a general lack of children's playthings that depict characters closely resembling Senegalese locals. Any coloring books available feature Western characters and, you know, light-skinned, light-haired people. This gave Evelyn an idea. The kids absolutely do love um, to color with coloring books, and I also searched in the same vein for something that the kids could relate to and realize, like, you know, most products and inventions come into the world because there's a person trying to solve a problem. And so for me, if I couldn't find the coloring books I wanted, maybe it was time to make one. So Evelyn says she kept the idea in her head until about two months after installing in her permanent Peace Corps home during the World Cup soccer tournament in the summer of 2018. And that's when these, this idea started to come into my head that it should be about a young girl who wants to play soccer. Soccer is quite popular in Senegal, but outside of the largest cities, it's predominantly played by boys and men. Not only that, but for Evelyn... Um, very important for me is to have all of my stories to have female protagonists. I just think there's enough stories in the world that feature young boys. Um, and so for me, being a woman myself, I really wanted a strong female character. And with that, Evelyn got to work. The story is called Mayamuna Scores a Goal, or Mayamuna Natni Global Gotol. Mayamuna is a young Pular girl, and she wants to play soccer, but her brother resists, never wants to let her play. So Mayamuna decides to help her mother, who is an entrepreneur. She sews dolls for children and sells them in the market. So Mayamuna helps her mother sell the dolls. And when she's done, Mother gives her a portion of the profits. Gradually, Mayamuna begins saving her money until One day her brother comes home and says that his ball is popped and is upset that no one can play soccer now. So, Mayamuna goes and counts her money and realizes She has enough to finally buy that soccer ball she's been wanting to buy. So she goes to the market to buy a soccer ball, then races home. Tells her brother, let's go play. He's still being resistant, says, just give me your ball, I'll go call my friends. To which Mayamuna says, Nope, you're going to play with my soccer ball, you're going to have to play with me. And he kind of compromises with her, he says, okay, we can play, but you're still not on my team. So they go to the local field and play. And it's Mayamuna who scores the game-winning goal, helping her team win the game. It's 
at this point, he finally gets in and says, okay, you can really play. How about we play tomorrow? Evelyn says there are several lessons weaved intentionally into the story. I really want to feature a female entrepreneur. My work here as a community economic development volunteer is to help young, um, help youth, especially women and children, with um, creating income generating activities for themselves. And so I thought it was really powerful to have a, a woman in the story that was um, making income for her and her family, and then having my Muna help her, and then also be able to save money and reach that goal that she had, and then also get closer to her brother um, by just have, being kind and letting him play, even though all those times uh, he had never wanted to let her play. Now, Evelyn loves to write, but she says she's not a graphic designer. So she reached out to a friend in the US who knew of someone who could help her. Evelyn sent the graphic designer photos of local people, pictures of huts, buildings, anything that would give her a realistic sense of the environment in order to make the coloring books look as realistic as possible. The graphic designer did a fantastic job, according to Evelyn. The books turned out beautifully. So Evelyn decided to organize an event in order to distribute the coloring books. She invited about 20 local kids over to her host family's compound. And we sat down I read the story aloud to them and then made sure that I checked for understanding, had each one of them raise their hand and tell me what's a lesson that you learned. And after each kid took a turn doing that, I allowed them to have their fun afterwards and got uh, crayons and uh, coloring pencils out and each gave them a copy and they colored them in. And it was really nice to see them express themselves because, you know, I'm OCD, I try to color things within the lines and have things um, look realistic. Whereas these kids went to town and just put purple faces on orange arms and like green toes and they didn't really care about <laughs> how the, the, the cartoons ended up looking like but um, it was fun to see them have a lot of fun with that. first story with people on social media so then I got asked if I'd write another and it, I guess inspired me to keep going. This time the idea came one day when Evelyn was walking in another volunteer's village. Suddenly Evelyn, her friend, and several local children came across a frog. And I picked it up and to my surprise the girls around me all ran shrieking. Evelyn says there was a teenage boy there who said, what are you doing girls are scared of frogs and I was like well clearly I'm not. <laughs> And it was later on that the other volunteer said that was a good gender moment. And so that stuck with me when he said that. Evelyn thought, why are girls scared of frogs? So I decided I should write a story about a talking frog and get the idea across that girls should be brave and should, and why are they scared of frogs? They're so tiny and they're so cute. I'm personally obsessed with animals, so I will touch almost anything. <laughs> Evelyn started looking for some way to make the frog a hero in her story. So she started doing a little research and discovered that frogs eat mosquitoes. So I went, aha, <laughs> malaria. <laughs> and with that, Evelyn got to work. The story begins with a young Pular girl named Idani, who's jumping rope outside. Sees a frog and shrieks and the frog goes, what, what's going on? As if he's like, or sorry, it's a girl, it's a girl frog. All my characters are girls. <laughs> Idani screams again. Because she goes, oh my gosh, you speak Pular? And I add a little comedy in there. It goes, yeah, I speak Wolof in French too. The joke being, so many Senegalese people are multilingual that if there ever was a talking frog in this country, it would probably speak more than one language too. Idani starts naming reasons as to why she's scared of the frog, and the frog retorts, wait a minute, I'm the one that should be scared of you. She's like, you're, you're bigger than me, you're the one who can squash me. Realizing the frog has a point, Idani says, maybe it's just because I'm not familiar with you. And so she says, but I can see that you're nice now. And she said, but you know, do you do realize that all girls are scared of you? And then the frog goes, yeah, I know. Could you help me with that? So she takes the frog to see her friends, who, like Idani, run away screaming. And Idani is kind of the advocate for this frog now, going, no, it's a nice frog, it's fine. The frog starts talking, the girls scream again. And then they go, oh, you speak. Pular, and then Nadine goes, yeah, and French and Wolof too. And the frog goes, oh, you're sucking on a little lollipop. And the girl says, yeah, what do you like to eat? Mosquitoes, the frog replies. 
And that's when the girls go, gross, mosquitoes are bad, they, they bite us and then they infect us and we get sick and they go into all the malaria symptoms. Idani points out that she hasn't been sick with malaria because she's been sleeping under a bed net for the past two years. So the frog chimes in and goes, you girls should be sleeping under bed nets too. But one of the other girls realizes that the frog actually helps them. So she goes, oh, so you actually help us since you're eating the thing that makes us sick. And the frog goes, you see, I do help you guys. So there's nothing to be afraid of. And so the end of the story is that the, the, the girls go, Bismillah, welcome. You're welcome to come eat as many mosquitoes as you want in our house at any time. And they also end up asking their parents for bed nets. As you can see, Evelyn is very mindful of creating stories and depicting characters that reflect local culture. She says this is a major point of emphasis given her family heritage. My mother's Filipino and my dad is Filipino and Irish and a bunch of other um, Caucasian uh, histories. And I, I'm always mindful of that, like watching things on the movie screens or looking at stories and things and looking about representation of people and why it was particularly important for me to um, have stories with girls and have stories that kids can relate to. I just want to create more of things that you don't see. And I don't know, kids are, kids have that innocence to them where they see the world differently and they're, um, we come here to, as volunteers to teach new behaviors and new things and working with kids is just a completely different thing than working with adults and they have an openness in them and an eagerness and an energy to them and they're adorable. So it just makes more sense, I feel like, to write stories for them. There you have it. A volunteer mixing personal passion to address a community need, furthering Peace Corps' mission to promote gender equity in Senegal. Since we spoke with Evelyn for this podcast, she has released yet another coloring book. If it's anything like the first two, we know it was hugely popular and impactful with the children at her site. We thank Evelyn for talking with us, and as always, thank you for listening. I'm Frank Latona. With that, I say ba benen, en gongol, a la prochaine. Until next time, inshallah.